This is the Candor bush body that I reground from a partial height grind to a full height grind. After regrinding it, I was curious about the limits of durability in this knife to set a sort of low end benchmark for what higher grade steels should be able to achieve. And by lower, all I mean is this is 1075 at around 57 to 59 Rockwell, that's what it's spec. But I severely doubt that the effort gone into heat treating this steel is close to optimal. Like I doubt they use a cold temperature quench, for example. And I doubt they use a very fast quench after the soak. So there's probably some perlite being formed during the quenching. And there's probably some retained austenite. So the durability of the very edge is probably not going to be optimal. But it would set a break point that any higher quality steel should be able to achieve. So after regrinding this, the thickness of the apex bevel was between 10 and 20 thousandths. Now you can't actually see an apex bevel on this because I've modified it as I was doing the work. But what I mean is it started out looking similar to this and you can see there's a primary bevel which is what turns it from full steel stock into an actual tapered cutting profile and then there's an apex bevel which is much steeper than the primary bevel and that's what forms the apex the cutting edge. So initially this had an edge between 10 and 20 thousandths thick. That's the thickness right behind the apex bevel. And the apex bevel was sharpened at around 10 degrees per side. And I was kind of curious to see what I had to do with the knife to make it fail at that point. So I was curious to see with the edge apex thickness at 10 to 20 thousandths and the apex angle at 10 degrees per side, where would it fail? So I started off cutting some sheet foam, cut up some cardboard, cut up some pine, cut up some hardwood flooring, cut up some plywood. Now I was using about 35 pounds of force on the handle. And the reason I stop at around 35 is because the handle is so thin, it ramps up the pressure very rapidly. So at around 35 pounds, this was hot spotting so bad, I could only do around say 50 cuts into the wood and I'd start to get a bit of discomfort. And it's necessary to do a high volume when you're trying to figure things out like this because anything can happen in one or two cuts and you don't want to make a snap decision. But if you look at the cumulative effect of 50 cuts and then change something and look at the cumulative effect of another 50 cuts, you can be kind of decently comfortable that you reach a sensible conclusion. So after cutting up the wood, I cut up some light plastic, some pop bottles. I cut up some heavy plastic. These are just retention ties uh, left over from screws from a screw gun. They're much thicker than your standard zip tie. Finally, I cut up some aluminum uh, cans, just regular pop bottle cans. And then I went cutting up some actual food cans. None of the work, anyway at all, ripple the edge bevel. And what I mean by that is, this apex grind, this actual final grind was undamaged. No damage to that. The only damage was the very apex, the actual very front of the edge itself, rippled and it only rippled on the food cans. So, as it could be thinner, I brought it down between 5 and 10 thousandths thick. And the reason that I'm saying there's a range between 5 and 10 thousandths is because this is all done by hand, it's not done on a machine, and there's some variances along the edge. And I brought it down Using this beast of a stone, this is a 24 grit Nubatama water stone. It cuts extremely fast. Um, as you can see, it soaks up water like a tilt and releases water extremely fast. It wears very slowly, uh, and it's a very nice stone for doing uh, that kind of work, altering profiles. Now, it leaves very deep scratches, but they're very easily brought up to speed by this, which is a 180 grit water stone, and I jumped directly from this to a 1000 grit. And that's what I was using for the actual finished edge. Now you can bring the primary down on a belt sander, power equipment. Uh, the only thing is 1075 has no temper resistance whatsoever, it's a plain carbon steel. And when you get very, very thin on the edge, the steel has no ability to heat sink, so it overheats very quickly. And I was trying to make very small changes, so 
it was only taking me like a couple of minutes on the course 24 grit stone then progress through the grits and I had the change that I wanted so anyway with the edge between five and ten thousand sticks repeated all the cutting no damage again on except as I noted the actual final apex rolled a little bit okay edge is still too thick so next I took it down between three and six thousandths of an inch thick at that point you really becomes difficult to actually see the edge bevel itself went through all the cutting again uh, by now I had abandoned the foam I had abandoned the cardboard uh, they're just too light you really can't damage the edge with them at all uh, pine wasn't doing anything hardwood wasn't doing anything plywood wasn't doing anything and if you look at the thumbnail videos you can see I wasn't cutting it very light I was again using like I said around 35 pounds on the handle and there was a lot of twisting a lot of force because this old stuff is horrible to cut out it's a laminated board and of course it splinters it cracks it's full of knots and again the only thing that would damage it was the food cans and I was cutting rings right off the food cans cutting right through the ridges right through the fold line strap everything okay one last shot took the stones out again and flattened it down hundred percent so that there was no apex bevel it was just one single bevel from spine right to edge surely at that point in time the edge had to give up so again with the edge no apex bevel at all went through the cardboard went through the wood kind of curious to see what would happen on the plywood no damage cut up the pop can cut up the plastic bottles uh, and again on the food can the edge rippled again and the damage to the edge was very very slight uh, that's like the I had to measure it under magnification and then estimate the extent and it was only about two thousandths of an inch deep that's it and again that was with the edge at 10 degrees per side and almost no apex bevel at all with uh, essentially it would be fully flat ground from the spine right to the edge then it would be raised up to 10 degrees and essentially at this point just a micro bevel applied and you couldn't even see it and even under magnification uh, there is no distinct actual uh, difference between the apex bevel and the primary bevel they were so small the only thing that was a bit off about this experiment was that while the bevel is full flat on this side it actually is full flat to around 25 thou thick on this side and then it picks up a slightly heavier bevel so I thought I was cutting with a five degree per side angle when I had it down to the point of uh, no apex bevel but as it turns out because the edge sort of thickens on this side I was cutting with a seven and a half degree bevel right down here at the point where it's around 25 thou thick here's a question I would ask all these heavy-duty tactical sort of knives that are running those bevels between 30 and 40 thou thick at the apex and between 20 and 30 degrees per side what are they cutting with them that requires that type of edge bevel when this knife now has no apex edge bevel at all at 10 degrees per side the only thing that's damaging it is your heavier food cans and even that is only damaging it to two thousandths of an inch deep which means if I just increase the micro bevel up until that reached stability which would probably be around 15 degrees per side there's still no requirement for an apex bevel on this knife to cut all those materials 